Hey metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email piercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, it's Jeff McNichol down here at Mom's Music, 1900 Melwood Avenue. And I was just thinking, when I was a kid, the magic was at Frankfurt Avenue, the Mom's Music at Frankfurt Avenue. And I used to beg people to get a ride down there just to hang out with the guys and see all the cool gear. Now that I'm the owner of this store, it's like a dream come true. We're recreating the magic with the vibe that we used to have at the old store. We're carrying all the gear that you're going to possibly want. And we're giving you the outstanding service and personal attention that you deserve. Yeah, so we've got the great guitar shop here. We're carrying USA Fender, USA Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, Gretsch, Jackson, Charvel, anything you could possibly want, we're going to have it for you. Mom's is and always will be Louisville's Music Store. Thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson and I am your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at MetalForgeRadio at gmail.com or visit the website MetalForgeRadio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. What is going on, Metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Metal Forge. How the hell are you? Wow, this week I have Mike Brewer from the Awesome Doom Death, however you want to classify them, band Kiarn from Central Appalachian, Kentucky. You know, cool stuff. Mike is such an awesome guy. He puts on a couple of festivals a year. This weekend, starting today, he is doing Holler of Doom, and it's all Doom bands out at the campgrounds at 420 Urban Road. So go check it out if you are in that area because it is totally fucking rad and awesome. He also produces Mountains of Metal and he does that a couple of times a year. We played, my band Overload played back in May. It was super rad time, super fun. And he also tries to do a fall type festival in October for Mountains of Metal also. So if you're in the area, check it out. But before we talk to Mike and before we talk to Athena, she's back this week, awesome, with her kind of a concert view type, uh, concert calendar type thing, instead of an album review this week. But before we get into talking with her and Mike, my inbox blew the fuck up yesterday. And it's like, what do you think of this? And this is... The idea that Rex Brown and Phil Anselmo are doing a, quote, reunion tour for Pantera. And it's like, to me, what do I think about that, really? I don't know if you want to know. (laughs) No, to me, it is one of the deals where it's just like, I don't buy that. Because Phil's been, a couple of years ago, has been doing this whole Pantera reinvented thing with the, quote, Illegals band, right? I saw him on the farewell tour for Slayer. I wasn't really impressed, after, you know, because I've seen Pantera. I, I got to see Pantera a couple of times before the end. And, like, it's just not the same, you know? It's definitely not the same. You cannot do... And don't get me wrong, the players are amazing that that's rumored to be in part of this with Zach Wilde and Charlie Benante. 
it's it's great the great players. I just don't know if it's a doable thing. I've always thought that there's those bands out there that you can't you can't mimic really. You know, you don't cover songs from certain bands like the Beatles. You know, as much as I would like to, there's songs that you just don't cover certain bands and. And getting together with Rex and, and Phil, I don't think they, they have the core there to do it. I mean, more power to them if, if it's something that... I mean, obviously, Zach and, and Dime do play similar to each other. And Charlie is just... No, Benante is a f- just a fucking phenomenal drummer in his own right. But I think it's the magic thing. It almost is like when Ozzy remastered... Or when, I should say... When the albums were re-recorded slash remastered with Mike Borden and Rob Trujillo, where they took off like the Bob Daisley and Lee Kerslake parts and and stuff like that, it changed the albums, in my opinion. Yeah, the idea is still there. The songs they played them, but like it's just a a feel factor for me. So, no bueno. I'm sorry. I know that probably lets a lot of a lot of you metalheads down, but no bueno for me. I'm I'm glad that I got to see Pantera when I did the few times, you know. And hey, I get it, you know. I I get that it's to me it just seems like it's a more of a cash thing on Phil's part and and Rex's part at this point, and and I hate that. I hate that it's a should we dust off these songs and, and do a. And do it as is what we can, and, man. I mean, come on, really. Write new stuff. You know, that's my. That's always my biggest thing. Is like write new stuff. Yeah, you you can always do whatever, but I think you know, doing new material is where it's at. I go to I go to tours to see to see as much cool stuff as I can. You know, that's just me though. So let's go ahead. Let's. Uh, other than that, you know, I really don't have much of anything. You know, um, I do want to say thank you for all the feedback that we've been getting. Thank you for the for the YouTube views. This the show is coming back to YouTube. I've decided. I know there's a lot of people that just put on YouTube in the background that doesn't have to necessarily quote be a video, but like, hey, hell yeah, absolutely, more power to it. Let's let's build this empire brick by brick by absolute brick hell yeah so let's go ahead let's check in with athena for her concert calendar segment this week hell yeah we'll be right back Misfits and miscreants, bangers and meshers, deviants and the deviated, the tormented and the fermented, ghouls and goblins, creatures of the night, Jack, those headphones, crank the volume up to max, spark it up and just relax. It's time for your deadly dose. Welcome to the next installment of Mental Mischief. On today's lineup, it's a very special lineup, actually. You know, sometimes I like to report back about uh, shows and shit that I've been to. This time, I am going to be promoting a show that is coming up very soon. So, on today's lineup, we have Metal Fest 11. That's right. Chapter 11, Louisville, Kentucky, July 22nd through July 24th. Summertime, and the air is thick with the sounds of metal. Louisville, Kentucky has one of the best scenes for metal. I have personally lived in some cities with some extreme metal. Buffalo, I mean, you know, home of Cannibal Corpse. Pittsburgh, home of most your amazing grind bands, if you're into like that crazy grindy shit like I am. But Louisville 
offers the most eclectic bundling of misfit metal to ever graze these ears. Everything from thrash, death, speed, funk metal, western cowboy metal, yeah, I'm talking about you, Stagecoach Inferno, various hardcore metal acts to dark wave synth black metal. It's completely across the spectrum. Trust me, you will never get bored of the Louisville metal scene. I mean, for example, wait, 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 before, before I get into this, DM Meyer, DM Meyer, my sound, my sound tech and, and shit over here. Yeah. Um, I think we need to do this shot that's sitting in front of me before I start getting too in depth with this, don't you think? That's a lot to talk about, yes. It's, it is. I mean, we're going to talk about like 50 bands. Well, I'm going to talk about like a couple of those 50 bands. <laughs> we have plastic shot glasses now, so we're going to make the noise with our mouths. Ready? All right. Tweet. <laughs> I like how they are both different sounds. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Had to go cheap because I'm fucking broke right now. <laughs> Shit bites you back. <laughs> it's all right, though. <laughs> it does the job. <laughs> anyway. It does. It's actually not that terrible. No. No. Uh, okay, I digress once again. But I'm get Okay, getting back on track. Every Monday, there is a free metal show at the Highlands Tap Room. Or as some of us <coughs> locals like to call it, the Double Tap. I didn't you, you know got, they called that. Really. Yeah, actually. We, well, the Metalheads, we called the Double Tap because the original tap room that held Metal Mondays uh, is yeah. no longer in existence. Makes sense. And they moved into a new building next to another tap room, so it's the Double Tap. Ha, I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 but Metal Monday didn't die. It did. It just moved from one tap room to another tap room. So it never died. And one of the coolest things about Metal Monday is that not only is it like local bands and tri-state area bands, but it also includes like touring bands that just kind of stop through, so to speak. Examples being like Havoc and U.S. Bastards. I know you guys know what I'm fucking talking about. U.S. Bastards, Havoc. That's right. I just said that twice. Double tap, get it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, earlier you said uh, um, the Metal Mondays, <laughs> you know, they never stopped. And it made me think of, like, Metal is Eternal. <sighs> well, Metal is Eternal. It is, that, absolutely. That was and my best metal voice. You're like, Eternal Metal. We will work on that. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let her talk now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, did my double tap joke. Okay, I'm, I'm back on track. <laughs> so, every weekend, too, man, you have to choose which metal show you want to go to. I mean, there's literally so many options every weekend. And if it becomes feasible, can you split the venues? How far is Magbar from Z-Bar? How far is Z-Bar from Headliners? How far is Headliners from the Mercury Ballroom? I mean, fuck if I know exactly, because I'm usually taking Uber by then, but there's so much fucking metal in this city. That's what I'm getting at. (laughs) Anyway, all right. So, speaking of that, there are several special metal events that happen every year here. I mean, we've got, like, Louisville's Dead Fest and shit like that, and, like, um, there's uh, some of them who that are kind of defunct now, but, you know, it's always been, like, a long-running thing in Louisville is, like, the festivals and bringing the bands together and... You know, it's it's kind of a special thing here in Louisville. You might not think it, but this is a really great hub for heavy metal, is living in Louisville. Um, obviously, there's Louder Than Life, which... Uh, no, we're not going to 
not going there. I don't consider that the metal festival. Yeah, they, they don't do I'm a good job. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like Fiona Fest oh, and yes. stuff like that. You know, like the real like metal shows, like loud, say, louder yeah. than life. Like yeah, they have. And you can't see me, but I'm doing like the air quote thing. Right. Um, they have me too. metal bands. We're at the same time. That, uh, that's what I meant. That's why I was but, like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you want to see a washed up Metallica, that's cool. <laughs> what I am talking about is of the way deeper, man. We pull bands from the tri state area to enhance the awesome that is the Kentucky metal scene. Lexington, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Chicago, Atlanta, Columbus, Pittsburgh, etc., etc., etc. But there are a very well, hold on. Da -da 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 -da. And there are <laughs> a few very important shows that happen every year. And the Jeremy Wade No Cancer Fighting Weekend is a pivotal one. Held at Boondocks Grill at the farm and celebrating 11 years of fighting, it brings together over 50 bands in three fucking days. Three days, 50 bands. That's right. On July 22nd, Metal Forge's own Mark Jackson and Overload will be headlining the night. Alongside his bandmates, Mike Taylor on drums, Todd Hawkins on guitar, and our host with the most on bass and vocals, Overload is going to punctuate the night. That's right with their thrash laden riffs and nostalgic sound overload may have you checking your for your brain matter on your battle vest by the end of the night but wait there's more there's two more days of head banging fist pumping high fiving beer chugging blunt facing seizure inducing metal you may want to think about stashing some Advil in your pockets, maybe next to like that, uh, you know, flask that you're not supposed to be smuggling in. And, uh, and if you're being protected of those eardrums, maybe some earplugs, you know, metalheads say, what? You know, DM, you, you, I never hear shit out of my left ear, like ever. <laughs> this is true. Headphones are like kind of glorious because I can actually hear everything. <laughs> At least she says it's, that. But <laughs> <laughs> At least she says she can't hear all that air. I can't. I really can't. It's too many years of like standing right by like the stack on the, <laughs> on the left side of the stage. Mm. Anyway. Louisville is so fucking metal that there is actually another three-day metal show festival happening that same weekend. I mean, the possibilities are fucking endless in the city when it comes to metal. I feel super stoked that I get to live somewhere that has so, so many opportunities to go see so much good metal, man. We don't necessarily get a bunch of, like, the big bands, per se, around here. You know, I have to travel. I call that my road warrior thing, you know, like, when I travel for the bands. Anyway, I have to do a lot of traveling to go see these metal bands because we don't get a lot of the bigger bands here, which is fine because a lot of the smaller bands are local bands, per se, like I was mentioning earlier, like Cincinnati, Chicago, and Pittsburgh, and all that. These bands are incredible. And just because, like, we don't fucking know their names doesn't mean that, like, they're not really fucking awesome, you know? So I love the fact that they come and they play our little bars and shit. And, you know, and then, like, two years down the road, I see them exploding. I'm at Full Terror Assault or something, and they're on main stage opening for Exodus. Like, that's fucking awesome, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I saw those guys at a little fucking dive bar in fucking Louisville. But, um, I'm, I'm, I digress once again. It's just so amazing how much opportunity we have for metal in this city. Well, Especially, be, like, you know, sorry. when we have, like, these festivals and things. So, what, DM? No, when, nothing. I was just going to say, obviously, they don't explode the way that Guar explodes, from what I hear. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I've seen Guar in many of its several existences, and, uh, 
Jaguar will always be one of the bloodiest, most amazing shows you'll go to. Where else can you get covered in cum and blood? That's why they buy Explode. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, like, they literally have had, like, people, like, quote-unquote, again, with the air quotes, explode on stage. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, yeah, Princess Diana. Like, they had, like, a thing, like, explode out of her stomach once and shit. And, you know, I mean, oh, yeah, no, Guar ripped apart and desecrated and exploded many things on stage to just cover us and gore, guar, gore, guar, gore. <laughs> gore, gore. Ah! Gore, gore. Man, I miss gore, gore. I haven't seen gore, gore on stage for forever. Okay, oh my god, I keep diverting. Like, that's my fault. <laughs> okay, so, because <laughs> there's too much going on in this brain. My stoner brain is just too much. This is just too much for me to rattle off all the bands. So, you will just need to go check this shit out on Facecrack and the interwebs, as Henry Rollins would say. The Jeremy Wade No, and that's N O E, Cancer Fighting Weekend. In addition, you can find Overload and Mark Jackson and 90% of the other bands on Bandcamp, Facecrack, and in the Metal Archives. So, if you are ever traveling through Louisville, Kentucky, make sure you check out what the fuck is going on in our music scene. Pick up a Leo or a Velocity to see what the fuck Louisville Metal has to offer. By the way, before I go, I have cotton mouth, so I'm gonna I take a sip of this beer. Hold on. Mm. Oh yeah. The champagne of beer. <laughs> I have to also say that Louisville's badass for its local art, community awareness, delectable foods, farmers markets, bourbon, and craft. Oh, wait, did I just say bourbon? Oh, let's do the magical, like. You see the. Like, yeah. Make a little clink yeah. over here. Right? No, they don't. Ting. There we go. <laughs> Oof. Bourbon and craft beer. Come for the metal, stay for the culture. Yeah, I just made that tagline. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now it's come that time. Keeping it short and simple, here are the rules for Athena's five shot review for Metal Fest 11. The Jeremy Wade No Can. No, N O E. Cancer Fighting Weekend. Five shots. I needed five shots to get through the motherfucker. Four shots. Meh. Could have used some oomph. Three shots. Good. Made me eardrum and bang my head. Two shots. Really good. Put that shit in the glove box for traveling. One shot. Excellent. I'll probably have a bang over in the morning. So here it comes. The shitty drum roll. And as you probably already guessed, I'm giving Metal Fest 11... One shot! Excellent! I will most definitely have a bangover after three days of fucking Louisville metal in the morning. So, until we meet again, have a most excellent time, and remember, keep it heavy. DM say bye. Bye. Bye bye. Cut. That's a wrap. Awesome, awesome stuff. Looking forward to some of those. Of course, Metal Fest 11, I am playing. So if you're in the Shepherdsville, Kentucky area next week, come out and see us we're playing friday night we're closing that night out and just stick around for the weekend because it's awesome shit with like blood of angels grand shawl eulogy and blood e flat all these awesome fucking bands coming to play 
this Jeremy Wade no cancer benefit. Everything goes, every pro proceed goes to the Jimmy V Foundation, so on and so forth. Come check it out if you are there. Let's go ahead and get into this week's episode with Mike Brewer. This is from Kiarn. This is Seeker. All right. This is a real shit. metalheads i have mike brewer the proprietor of a few festivals in the kentucky area uh he's got holler of doom which starts today it's today and tomorrow and he's got uh mountains of metal which overload my band played back in may and he's also the singer in this awesome fucking like doom band kiarn dude what is up hey hello how are you mark Man, I am doing great. And of course we know, uh, of course everybody knows out here that, you know, I say that it's like the day of when they know that I pre-record all these episodes and stuff. So uh, Mike is actually on the way to Illinois right now. So if there's any cuts, uh, you know, stuff like that going on, it's because he's uh, hitting (laughs) hitting bad service areas. (laughs) I live for two things, heavy metal and 70s model four trucks. Dude, you didn't mention that it was a heart. '70s model before we were talking. Hell yeah! Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Crew cab, full drive, F two fifty. I don't want to reveal too much, but it could be the king of all trucks. 
man dude see like i love older vehicles like that too uh, i'm i like 60 50s and 60s and 70s era trucks for the most part the 80s have some good models and stuff but like for me like i love like those rounder body cab trucks oh absolutely I, well i mean i'm under the firm belief that society really you know peaked in 79 it's all been downhill ever since <laughs> right because you're at the reagan years you're coming yeah. up in the reagan years at that and yeah we exactly. kind of did uh, shit hit the fan and it was all been all bad ever since right uh the only thing that got better was the metal <laughs> uh, it's, it's true it's true I, I love 70s metal but they really they really took off with an 80 and so on and so forth oh. in the modern day which is what it's a 2029 now i don't even know it's fucking in the future it, it's something weird. I mean, now you know. In the next few years, you know, with all of the with all of the stuff from like Stranger Things, with like the you know, I'm a huge Metallica fan. Don't get me wrong, and I'm one of those guys that is like die hard the entire career. I like Saint Anger even, and I like Saint Anger. And, and see, that's so rare because there's so many people that are like, oh, it's garbage, or you get the first four album guys and, and people. Like, I should say. Like, to me, I mean, after Reload, it's like, where could you go but up? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, and see, I, I, I cheated because the first time I ever saw St. Anger was, was when it was on the rehearsals DVD to come with the CD that had Rob Trujillo playing bass with them. Dude. So I didn't hear those songs, you know, like the recorded versions. I heard them jamming their mouth in practice space. And I was like, shit, yeah, this is awesome. You know, I that that was a bad thing for me because I watched the DVD before listening to the CD because yeah. it was so unheard of to be like, wow, this CD came with a video, you know, and, and yeah, that's really. when DVD had really taken off, and it's just like this this thing, and it was still like moderately priced. It wasn't like ridiculously expensive, and like I think my sister's boyfriend at the time, I think he like stole the CD. And it come with a DVD player, and it come with a DVD, and he didn't have a DVD player, so he's like, "Here, man, you can have this." It's like, "Oh, thanks, man." <laughs> wow! And I watched the video. I had a shitty 13-inch television VCR combo <laughs> that I had a, that I was able to plug my DVD player into, and I and it was same. It's like mono, right? It's like garbage. Yeah. And I watched that <laughs> DVD on that, and I was like. Hmm. Oh man, this is like what? This is awful. And then I listened to the actual <laughs> album and I was like, you know, it's not so bad. And yeah. as I've gotten older and listened to it in like different media, uh, aside from like CD, you know, just like listening to it in headphones, listening to it on vinyl, vinyl and headphones and stuff like that, I've like I've really had a, like a great appreciation for it. Well, you know, I mean, the people as in general will just love to shit on things. Tr like we're all critics. So, I mean, it's really easy to create a con saying anger because you can point to just a couple of things. <laughs> oh, I don't like it because it ain't got no solos. Oh, I don't like Lars' sound. But every other album, they're lo like load, reload. They're like, I don't know. There's something about it. It wasn't, you know, they couldn't put their finger on it because it was such a kind of a, a broad spectrum of all that, what they were trying to put out. Well, I will, I will be that guy and say, you know, I do think the load and reload could have uh, had the fat stripped away and come out with really – one good album. Oh yeah, like there's one, about six or seven really good songs there. Yeah, and one amazing, amazing Metallica album could have been done. Instead, they they decided to release everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and more power to them. I know for some reason in the early '90s, whenever metal was kind of dying off, then they didn't want to be pigeonholed to a dying horse. And, you know, I, I understand. You know, but their their name is Metallica. They are metal. They need to. They, they should have embraced it a little more. Right. But I don't, I, like I said, I'm not a critic. I love those guys and that stuff. They, they've oh, influenced yeah. millions, if not billions, of people and are still doing it every day. So, I mean, oh, absolutely. That's magic. And I think it's great that. You know, and I, and I made a post on Facebook here a few a few days ago, probably about a week or so ago about it. So, is anybody tired of Kate Bush and Metallica yet? And totally did it as a joke, right? Because it's just like, you know, j <laughs> because every video or every other video on TikTok, it's either Kate Bush in the background music or it's Master of Puppets in the background music, and it's just like I know it's a fad right now, but yeah. I actually revisited the entire album of Master of Puppets and just 
it's unreal. It's it's an unreal album. Uh, it's just completely unreal to be like you know like twenty four. You know, imagine being twenty four years old and coming out with that. Oh, they were they were hitting all cylinders there. Those first three albums are untouchable. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> right. But aside from the Metallica talk, because, hey, we could go on for uh, at least four or five hours, like, dissecting, like, what, and what, what do you think he means on Trapped Under Ice? You know, stuff but, like that. But, but what, isn't it so amazing that, like, if they can have, like, a little spot in a TV show, that it's such a big part of, you know, pop culture right now that it turns on so many people just from, you know, watching however many minutes of film that is. You know, all the stuff that they didn't know existed, but it's so big in the world, you know, oh, right. we discover it. It's just, you know, it's pretty magical. That's one of those things that kind of, they we lose touch with. You know, back in the 80s, you know, the media was so limited. There was no internet. And you just got what the TVs put out, and you go, your records and all that, whatever the companies put out. Definitely. And it's just to have that many people looking at something at once to make it big influence. It's pretty, pretty wild. Pretty it, wild. Oh, world. absolutely it is. I think they're the band that everyone knows about but, like, doesn't, like, register with sometimes. And what I mean by that is, like, they know who Metallic is because they've heard Inner Sandman, even on oldies radio right now. You're getting Black Album stuff on there. Yeah. But, like, I think it's the band that everyone knows who they are or or about who they are. And then all of a sudden, bang, the, the Master of Puppets scene happens. And just, like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, that, that fucking band. They kick fucking ass. Yeah, I mean, cause like a lot of people, they're the big, the big pop thing was all you know the black albums. So, right. any, any little bit that you could make people look at the first three albums is, is a good idea. Definitely. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey guys, Wrestling Steve of the Wrestling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You'll also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show, and I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like, like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Hey, Metalheads. It's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio. Something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. So, as I was going to say a second ago, we could go on for like hours discussing Metallica stuff and, and everything, but we're here to talk about Kiarn and the festivals that you put on. 
yes, yes. My my wheelhouse. Coming to my wheelhouse. Mark. Yes. You know, I'm I'm that guy that's like that's one of those sayings that, I, that one of those cliches that I really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I'm right in my wheelhouse. What the fuck is a wheelhouse? You know, this is my this is my house where I own the wheel and I control <laughs> everything. The wheel is mine. The wheel is right. <laughs> So, <laughs> tell everybody out in Metal Forge Land about Kiarn. Uh, well, uh, Metal Forge Land ears. Uh, Kiarn is a conglomeration of the um, the voice of Appalachia. Uh, let me see it. Heavy music, a holler, um, with a message. You know, Kjarn is a, I don't know what you would call it, some sort of mountain spirit. But uh, basically, he's he's risen from the swamps in the back, the back hollers and the muck, uh, to come back, kind of straighten up some shit. Because, I mean, you know, Appalachia gets a bad rap. You know, all pill, pillbillies and, you know, heroin, all this other shit that's, swooped in it's all the bad drugs i mean because of where there's poverty you know there's there's drug abuse and it's just bad deal so right. we, here in southeast kentucky we are you know half of the we got half the top 10 poorest counties in the country over here you know not enough jobs go around and um, a lot of people look to certain things to kind of dull the pain or like change their existence and it's really caused a problem around here but uh but and a lot of our, you know, we've seen lots of our musicians over the past, you know, decades or so succumb to different addictions or different right. uh, different ends that are, you know, not necessarily, you know, timely. But we're survivors. Um, we got people from been playing music for, for a pretty good while. Our guitarist Bobby was in uh, Devastation of Ice, and we played together in Backwater Burial. And our my first band, 1134, we played it long ago, back in the early 2000s. We play all around Kentucky and the tri-state area, and all that good stuff. And uh, and what, that's what, kind of what Kiarn is. We're just uh, five pissed off Appalachians that are uh, pulling our strengths and uh, destroying people's ear ear canals whenever we can with uh, low gutturals and high screams as well. Whenever uh, we play shows, I just go into a trance and I'll, I'll just have the spirit of Kjarn pulsating through me. I speak as a medium through the other realm. So I really don't know what goes on at the shows, but apparently it's pretty powerful stuff. It is. And, you know, I've I've had the pleasure of seeing you all a couple of times now. And you're otherworldly on stage almost. Like you get, you have a huge commanding presence on stage, honestly, I think. There is something about your delivery and your the way you talk to a crowd of people and it like totally stands out and it's awesome because it's like when i'm there i am totally in tune and watching like everything that's going on with you guys hell yeah because hell yeah we do well i mean it's one of them things i get the, i get the greatest feeling in the world i'm up there because every bit of it i can give every bit of what i have and everybody else gets their all. We, we, we just leave it all on the stage and just rock out to our utmost. Right. Scream, which I think holler, is what everybody jump should do. around, all that good stuff. Do what that, sir? Uh, which is what everybody, I think, should do. Because, yeah. I, you know, I saw an interview one time, and I can't remember who it was, but it was it was somebody saying that, you know, when your feet touch that stage, that you better be up there and you leave it up there and you tell the truth while you're there because the people who are watching you know if you're not if you're not honest with them and then they're going to completely walk the fuck away which 100 percent genuine is what you have to be yeah absolutely you you have to have some sort of disposition that makes you want to get up there and say they have something to say you know i'm pissed off about a lot of things and I think you should be too. And this is what we're going to sing about. <laughs> definitely, definitely, I, I agree a hundred percent with that. So and we just go up there in our clothes. You know, we're, we don't put on stage clothes, and we don't. We're just kind of raw, kind of salt of the earth. It's like, you know, we're not trying to to dazzle people, or you know, like look, this guy don't look like a rock star. He's just he's just up there. Oh my god! But he sounds like one, or, and he plays like one. We melting faces. These poor people. I mean. They're, their faces, they've been mopping up faces all over the Midwest. Well, so I saw the face melt. I, definitely. And I think there's a, there's definitely that breakdown in 
music that's that way, where you have the bands that are are playing, you know, the music that where they do have to sit there and and to look like the quote rock star, where they oh, you yeah. know they wear the the cut off sleeves and and it's just because you know they would be wearing fucking khakis if not, <laughs> you know, I mean, in their in their all, daytime it, it life. All has its place, and I I love it whenever people up there can pull it off. But I get, when I get up there and see, because I, I I head bang my head is about, about to fly off every time I'm up yeah, there. Yeah, it is. So if I wear spikes, my hair is getting tucked around them spikes. I'm pull ripping my hair out. It's just, <laughs> Dude, that's hardcore. I, I, that's right, I'm gonna. You know, I'm. I've got a few are, people who. I've got some people. I'm just fist and head banging. Dude, I've got some people <laughs> but, yeah, who make that we, stuff. Uh, I'm gonna get some for you. I just love to. You know, it's it's a really a miracle to get five people together on the same page and uh, on the same channel producing those crazy vibrations that we produce. It's, it's, it's magic. Definitely. So I do want to bring up and mention here that, you know, Central Kentucky has a pretty big doom movement. Yeah, there's, there's pretty good doomers there. Um, I guess you call, I don't know what you call, you know, some people call it death, uh, kind of crash elements, some doom. I can see some doom. Uh, but yeah, but Storm Choker, those guys are awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, that, there's a few other doom bands I've heard around, but uh, those, those guys are definitely my favorite. Those who, those people, uh, I've been, I invited them down to, to the very first mountains of that long ago, years, probably five years now, four, about four, and uh, and then we had such a good time, and we had such a such a good friendship. They decided, well, well, let's throw a festival together. Like, Hell yeah, let's do it. So that's what we have. What we're what the we're, if people listen to this as soon as it gets released, then I'll be in the holler of doom, basking in all the gloriousness of metal that is uh, the celebration that we put it together. Definitely. So tell me about how what is holler of doom. Uh, well, let me see here. Well, let's. I guess. I guess the best way to start would be from the beginning. When I was born. Was, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> July 22nd, 1985. I was so, but this will be a week before my birthday. I'll be an old man. Uh, uh, anyway, get all that stuff out. But the reason that I started putting on festivals and I built a stage in the middle of nowhere is because growing up in southeastern Kentucky, when you're in the Bible Belt, nobody will give you a stage or a place to do your art. Nobody. Right. And I, in, in any place that you do have, any venue that you can rent out. Uh, somebody's going to mess it up and they're going to find an excuse not to rent it out anymore. So growing up and playing the music that we all love to play and hear, you know, heavy metal and just heavy music in general, there was no stage for us. So working through all that, and and like I was saying, that when you do not give an artist a place to do their art or a place to grow and find other artists, then like like they say, idle hand, devil's playground, in, in the non-good sense of, you know, uh, addiction and all the bad things, that poor decisions in life that we have because we've not got a place to be creative and enjoy, you know, what we do. So I, that's why I decided to go ahead and build a stage out here. I got together with my, my cousin, and this is, um, it's right in the middle of 50 acres. we got eight acres down in the bottom there. We built a stage. We have a covered pavilion. Uh, it is just a great place where all of us freaks to get together and you know fly our freak flag and to find like-minded metalheads, individuals, you know, to just come and celebrate. Because I mean, that's that's what makes the whole event is the people that participate in it. And I think there's going to be 19 bands this time. The last festival we had 20 bands, and all of them were from Kentucky. That's what I do with Mountains of Metal, just all Kentucky bands from all over, the best I can get. That's why we got overload last time. They put on right. the show. It's still uh, echoes ringing in the holler about that. Thrash legends, Kentucky thrash legends. Oh, come legends. on now, come on now. <laughs> they are, they are, they love it. But, but yeah, um, Holler of Doom is a joint production between you know Mounds of Metal, which is myself and the Storm Choker, and uh, and they they handpick all the bands, which their friends and uh, acquaintances they've met out on the roads. Uh, we have uh, Costa Casanova coming in, the Book of Worms, uh, Wind Rider. All these are from out of the state, uh, like Maryland, uh, North Carolina, maybe Tennessee. Um, but it recently started as just a Doom Metal Fest. It's kind of it's mainly themed around Doom, 
but uh, and lots of extemporaneous acts that uh, cover a wide array, you know, of our heavy tunes and whatnot. Right. We, just have, we have artists and vendors and just, you know, stuff, fun stuff for people to do. Definitely. And, that, you know, that was honestly one of my most favorite moments of Mountains of Metal was taking the walk down down by the creek and just everybody's tents were set out, you know, and you had per, like Peril Hot Sauce out there and like everybody else's stuff. And um, obviously uh, the food trucks, because I'm a I'm I'm a big dude, you know, and I like the and I like the food <laughs> truck thing. But like walking down down the creek line and everybody's tent is set up and it's just like, hey man, what's going on? It's been a while since I saw you and it's like what's how have you been type shit. It's like everything is everything is cool and it's such a great atmosphere. Yeah, there's no really like the hard line between bands and concert goers. We're all just there together doing our thing. You know, so you Yeah. Know, and it's share, like a big party, know. honestly. Yeah. Somebody called it a glorified field party at one time. I took a little bit of offense, but hey, if that's the vibe we can give, good deal. Because, I mean, uh, why we, not, uh, though? Yeah, I mean, it's a, we, are, we are indeed partying. It is a field. You got that right. <laughs> We've got the top-notch sound and lights happening with all the, the best in the state. and It's just a, it's just a magical time. Like, to me, there's nothing uh, more, you know, freeing or just, I just, I just feel more at home than hearing you know, good local music or just, you know, just made by people. You know, we've gotten such a point that almost most of the music you hear now is machine produced. <laughs> so it's, There is a lot of like it that just, is, yeah. Just seeing people doing their thing and just being in it. And, you know, we, we like to get down late tonight. I think Yarn's set to go on at uh, midnight on Friday. Nice. So, so we like to get down late in that time, get a little, get a little wacky, stay up late. You know, look at the stars and whatnot. Hell yeah! So, so tell tell everybody out um, where it's at and who and who all's performing this weekend. Let's see here. Well, we are outside of London, Kentucky, about uh, eight or ten miles. Get, uh, the address is four twenty Urban Road, uh, <laughs> London, Kentucky. Uh, uh, that's the real address. I swear. It but, is. Uh, it is the real address. <laughs> Yeah, and and, and, right and GPS with this being uh, in what I call middle of fuck all Kentucky. Yeah, <laughs> the gotta, the GPS GTA does loaded. actually I work. Think AT&T has good service, but yeah, yeah, Verizon, Verizon doesn't have good service. service, but AT&T does. Yeah, so we're gonna have some delicious uh, sausages down there, or our uh, our Hibbert's concessions that are our good friends. They come in, give us all the delicious grilled meats. They had pork chops last time, the size of my head. Dude, oh, those pork like chops are Evan. great. Oh, God, so good. Uh, but uh, all sorts of bands, uh, band, uh, I don't have a complete list in front of me, but like I said, uh, Costa Casanova, I think they're the ones traveling the farthest. They're from Maryland. Um, Book of Worms, maybe from around there somewhere as well. Uh, Wind Riders from Johnson City, Tennessee. They'll be playing on Friday night late before us. And uh, Bud, which is a great uh kind of just the metal, what you want to call them, the hardcore, but kind of just metal band out of Corbin. Uh, my friend Zach Inslee, he, he's a good band. And he does a lot for the scene down there. He's the singer for Bud, and he also owns the White Records, White Rabbit Record Shop in Corbin. <coughs> and uh, they're actually having a show uh, well, this past weekend. Uh, no keeper out of it. Anyway, he does a lot for the scene. He's a good dude, and uh, you should get, if you're ever in Corbin, you should check it out. Definitely. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking about going to Corbin later this year to watch Judas Priest. No, you should. You should totally do it. There's a pinball arcade museum. And it's a good time. Nice. A pinball yeah, museum. Yeah, Priest is coming in November. Yeah, it's like uh, the week before or the week of Thanksgiving or something like that, which will actually be the, the week of the 200th episode of, uh, of the Metal Forge here, which is awesome. Well, you should get a hold of Rob Alford. <laughs> you know, hey, for the two-hour episode, I bet he would. He's pretty cool. Uh, so I've been told, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's uh, let's try that. <laughs> so hell yeah, uh, if you're yeah. in the Central Kentucky area, 420 Urban Road this week, uh, tonight and tomorrow is the Holler of Doom. So please go out, have fun. Yeah. You know, do what you do out there. 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, just support these awesome fucking bands that are playing this music because it kicks yeah. fucking ass. Yeah, I think uh, Jen Marie and Blackwater Station, yeah, they're killing it. Uh, dope. I mean, uh, Stone, Stone Tucker, of course. They're going to be closing out Saturday night. Of course. Uh, just Why so many they? great bands from the, uh, from the Doom uh, movement, I guess. And, uh, you know, just a friendship group. And that, and that to me, that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, it's all about, they try to, their best to separate us out in the world and divide us and make us hate each other. But once we get there, we realize we got so many commonalities. It's really, uh, it's really what's all about. It's fellowship and brotherhood and, you know, not feeling so alone in this world. Definitely. Definitely. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com bigcartel.com Hey, it's Mark Maxwell at Maxwell's House of Music. Listen, all this stuff is now available to purchase on our website. Check it out at maxwellshouseofmusic.com We carry all the top brands, like Fender. We got Gibson. We also have basses. We've got ukuleles. We've got drums. We've got sound gear. We've got keyboards! It's Gonna Get Weird is the name of the podcast. We're on season two, so you have a whole season to get weird with Frank Green and Scott Clark. The best part is there's always laughter. We have national touring comedians, NFL stars, rock stars, your local friends. It always gets weird. Weird answers. Have y'all ever snorted coke off of a 78 Pinto? No? You ain't no f- man. Weird questions. Who had a bigger cocaine habit, Jock Sutherland or Kaywood Ledford? Neither one because they stopped beating their wives. And weird we never even thought of. Well, no. My friend is on acid, and I sent my friend to go find a payphone so that I can call and turn myself in for murdering this guy and ruin my life. We love all types of people, but we don't love all people. (laughs) Weird. It's going to get weird as the name of the podcast. Available everywhere. And thank you to Big X Sports Radio for being a proud sponsor of It's Going to Get Weird. Frank Green, Scott Clark. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to some general profile questions about Metal Mike here, you know. These are all about you and, hey, they could be music related. They could be life related. It's just however you want to interpret. All right. Cool. All right. First question. What was the thing that you begged your parents for as a kid and they finally gave it to you? Oh, we'll say a BB gun. <laughs> yes. I wanted one so bad. I was like, oh, this BB gun. They're like, oh, no. They could see you know, all sorts of broken windows in the future all this shit, and I begged and begged and pleaded. I finally got one. Yeah? I, I bet it was your dad that gave it to you, right? Do what? Was it your dad that gave it to you? Like, uh, against, no. <laughs> against mom's wishes kind of shit? No, no, no. Dad wasn't around at that point in time. He was, my oh. dad was a truck driver back in the days. So he was all over the place. Also on the run from the FBI for most Holy of Holy shit. Uh, my young days. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're deep in the middle here. But, uh, yeah, he went to federal penitentiary when I was about... Seven, seven or eight got out when he was when he was eleven. Wow! So my dad was a wild man. Sounds like it. <laughs> it's not where you get it from. I hope. Yeah, I just but I'm trying to <laughs> try to channel, channel it in good ways. Definitely. It was a good time. That's all I could say. It's, it was a wild time. Uh, yeah, my dad was always notorious. So I could say he was. If he could find a loophole or a way around something, he he he'd do it. Right, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> but yeah, so the, I think the BB gun probably, maybe so. Hell yeah! This this next question is a little bit of a a thing because it's it, obviously it changes as time goes by. But what does your typical Friday night look like? Oh, Friday night me. Well, 
Oh, well, I have two kids, two lovely children, 10 and, uh, 10 and four, boy and a girl. They're awesome. My old and Mabel. So if everything's going good, I'm usually hanging out with them on a Friday evening. Uh, but, you know, if uh, things are going different, um, you know, if there's a festival or something, then I'll be usually right there at the gates at the Mountain View Farm, uh, letting people in and welcoming them to the big heavy metal party that they wish they could have went to all their lives, and they're finally here. So I just, uh, that's on a good Friday. Uh, lots of records. I listen to records. I'm a, a 70s metal is my thing. So I usually jamming up some old uh, Ben Lizzy tunes or oh, Dust yeah. or Moxie or any of the, any of those assorted budgie. God, I, I think I wore my budgie records out. Nice. It's all that old seventy stuff. It just it never gets old to me. Led Hell Zeppelin, yeah. man, Led Zeppelin. Was. You know that's funny because uh, I just saw a meme where it sat there and said, you know, uh, something about today's music. Just remember that Led Zeppelin had a fireplace in their plane. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, oh, wow. fun fact is the plane that belonged to Led Zeppelin. And here we are with the snake eating its tail kind of thing was purchased <laughs> by Metallica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the plane that they flew for the black in the black album tour was the same oh, plane wow. that Led Zeppelin used. <laughs> You wonder if they get the fireplace, <laughs> right? I, I don't know. I'd have. To, I want to do the research on it and find it out for sure. Like leave it in. Just leave it in. Now, back on the Friday night thing, I, I want to ask about. So, like when I grew up as a kid, Friday night, you know, we had like, you know, TGIF and stuff like that. You know that oh, yeah. the 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 Friday lineup, like hanging with Mister Cooper and all that <laughs> shit, right? And and uh, like. Uh, yeah, I remember those. Boy Meets uh, World. Yeah. And, like, so it was a different time period. And then, of course, as you get older, Friday night usually means going to the bar and drinking with your friends and stuff like that when mm-hmm. you're in your, tw- in your 20s. So with your kids, are you all doing, like, the, you know, like the the TGIF Friday kind of stuff also? <laughs> you know, for like your the, thing? Uh I'll, I'll, they list the records. When, when the kids come to my house, I kind of keep it old school. I don't have any Wi-Fi. Okay. I don't. Uh, I, I try to keep. I don't watch TV. I've not, I've not had a TV in mm, probably a decade or so. Nice. Just because uh, it's so fucking depressing out there. My God. Like right. I said, they're always trying to divide us up, put put, it, put us at it war with each other, blame each other for this. We all know who's to blame. We all know it's the fucking rich bastards at the top trying to pit us against each other so we don't focus on them and eat the rich. <laughs> I mean, we all know us. Right. We, if we don't all know, we should all know. Because they, they blatantly, obviously, pull the wool over our eyes, you know, day in and day out. Definitely. And, you know, that's a great... <laughs> no, honestly, I mean, I think that's why I don't watch the news is because yeah. it's it's such a, you know, such a thing where... I don't know. It's that blinding aspect of it. There's no such yeah. thing as impartial news anymore. It's all corporation based, and that's fucking garbage. Exactly. They're all owned by billionaires with agendas, right? <laughs> and their agendas is definitely not for you to smarten up and, uh, and have a more productive and fruitful life. That's for sure. Definitely. But wait a minute. For Fridays, when I was a kid, you made me think about it. Whenever I was a kid, and we, it was Friday, the, our routine was go to the movie rental place, which is movie warehouse or blockbuster or, uh, you know, video link, whatever it was. Uh, I lived all over Kentucky growing up, but I would go, I'd rent wrestling video. No. You know, old school wrestling tape. So that, that's where a lot of, I think my persona and you know, my intensity and my verbiage and my speaking skills, I think a lot of that came from those eighties wrestlers, you know, that were so good on the mic, the Roddy Pipers, you know, the road warriors, and all that good stuff. Dude. You're speaking my language right now because I can remember, like, the first time I went and rented, like, WrestleMania 4. <laughs> and I mean, Plaza. Yeah, tr- uh, fucking uh, the Plaza there. And 5 was there, too. <laughs> but, like, yeah. just like the one-day tournament for the, for the championship, and it came down to DiBiase and Randy Savage in the finals. And, and, you know, Savage wins. It was such a great show that, like, 
you know that yeah. same that the Piper's Pit episode with Morton Downey, and mm. where he's just like, oh, "I ask you not to blow the smoke in my face," you know, and it's yeah. <laughs> and he just lights him up with the fucking uh, with the uh, fire, fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah I totally did that as well. Roddy Piper, man. Was, yeah, them old them old talkers, old guys can talk you right in the seats. Oh, for sure. You know, Piper. And, I still miss Piper. That one still hurts. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's a legend. I mean, it's, and he had one of the, you know, could anybody have played the role of, you know, John Donna any better than they live? Oh. I mean, my God, what a classic. I mean, it's like, I know there's a lot of, you know, art that intimidate, you know, imitates life, but to me, that movie, They Live, really opened up so many possibilities and realizations that I really didn't think of at the time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, it's still, there's still scenes of it today that, like, are are kind of like ring true to today still. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's all the ads. Everything is kind of. Well, there's always an agenda, you know, a hidden agenda, underlying theme. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> that totally with you. That's that was my ideal back in the day. If we maybe if we get a pizza with that. Oh shit! Look out! Right. I want to get a, a, a They Live tattoo, but there's so many people that already have them, and it's just like, ah, do I want to do it? Do I want to do it? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just went to. I bought some shades for this trip because I got out here. The sun was so bright. Went in there, some dollar fifty uh, John Nada shades. I'm like, yep, I'm going yes. to Blues Brothers today. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> what is the nicest thing a stranger has ever done for you? Oh well, actually, here you go. A good example may not be the best, but it pops into mind. On my nineteenth birthday, I went to a super joint ritual show in Jillian in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. It was I got on stage with Phil on solo, and it was fucking awesome. And, you know, we did a, we did a high five, you know, a hand grasp or whatever, you know, the old school, just like, yeah, solidarity. Yeah. And I was like, fucking A. And then I stage dived off of there. And, like, well, I'm a, I was a big dude then, even. I was, you know, probably 240 then. And so when I stage, when I stage dive, everybody, the crowd just split like fucking the Red <laughs> Sea. <laughs> <laughs> so just as I'm about two inches from the, the pavement, this dude who's got dreads probably down to his knees – Reached down and grabs both of my arms, and I, I, and I'm like, I'm like reaching out too, and then like simultaneously, I grabbed his too, and he saved me from like busting my head on the con- concrete wow. there at the show, and uh, he was this complete stranger, never met in my life, and he didn't have to do that, but he did, and uh, I thank him very much for it. It would have been a lot different celebration with a cracked open skull, for sure, dude. That's wild, like. <laughs> because I that's I don't know that's that's one of the first thing I can think of where a complete stranger you know there's not many instances in life where you know oh and it's another time we went to see a Masters of Metal tour the Masters of Metal tour oh seven I think it was okay when it was a uh, Motorhead uh, Heaven and Hell and uh, Judas Priest oh Testament. yeah <laughs> we went and saw them and we used this big ass line it was sunny I mean it was probably like four hundred people in this line. And then, like, off to my left, in my left side of the view, I see, like, somebody with, like, an event shirt on. And he, like, looks over, and there's 400 people in line. And he, like, looks at me, and he, like, kind of gives me, like, a, like, a little a finger, like, hey, man, come here. And I was like, oh, this guy works here. He might know what's going on. So, like, everybody that was, like, me and my buddy and behind us, we all kind of, like, shifted over to this dude's line. We just kind of snuck over there because everybody else in front of us saw just BSing and waiting. And so this guy got us into the Masters of Metal, like, super quick. He like it just had formed other lines. So that was pretty cool. Hell yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, I wanted to go to that tour, and I didn't get a chance to. But could the fucking lineup? Oh my god, I, fucking I like you so said, real. Testament, which is fucking Testament's amazing, anyways. And yeah. obviously, I'm a huge fucking Motorhead fan. You know. Oh, yeah. And uh, Sabbath with Dio, Sabbath with Dio, and it was during a lawsuit era where they had to change their name to Heaven and Hell because of Sharon. Yeah, oh, well. yeah, and um, Judas fucking Priest. It's like, could you fucking oh. imagine? It's like, oh. holy hell, man! Like, I I was. missed out on that because I didn't have the money, and it's like that is also a tour that was one of my favorite Motorhead albums, like Motorizer. Mm. So, yeah. like, I really, I, I'm like, nah, oh, fuck, because I didn't want to miss it. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. 
Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground. From the graves of all those unholy. And they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine! An independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats. They're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. So, I have one more question, but before we get into it, links will be listed below, so please give a like, a share, and a follow. Go check out the, the pages for Kiarn, Mountains of Metal, and Holler of Doom festivals. And, Mike, do you have any shout-outs you want to give? Uh, shout-outs, yes. I'd like to give a, a shout-out to Mark Jackson. Oh, come for on. For keeping it real up there in the Louisville and keeping the scene alive and uh, giving your all on stage and just being a I don't know anything to better others. to do. Uh, well, I mean, somebody's got to get up there and show these people that it can be done. <laughs> right. And, uh, if it a, can be if done a, well. If, a, if an uncoordinated fat guy like myself can do it, you can too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why I go up in there. Be that I'm uncoordinated. I'm large. You know, full clothes most of the time. Large mammal. But uh, yeah, and I'm just shy. I mean, there's lots of there's people. Yeah, Nate McDaniel from home. Oh yeah. Uh, his wife Jen. <laughs> They're classy people. They got married down at their farm, um, down there at the venue. David Langley, he's basis for Stormtoker. I love all those guys. Um, all the people that come out to the shows, man, that's what we do it for. We need a little bit of – we'll do all the rest, just we people to play for. Hell, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, I, you know, I was started doing festivals and stuff down there because we didn't have a stage and a voice – and so uh, every festival that I do, I see more and more local bands popping up and more of a more of a scene happening. So, you know, that just makes me happy. That's what life's all about. We're trying to perpetuate, you know, the life that we love to live. And uh, we don't love to live this 90-hour-a-week horseshit corporate dream they're trying to shove down our throat. No. We like to be free. We like to get out in the nature. And uh, we like to see live music, wild people. All that good stuff. Fucking right. Absolutely. Oh, what a thrill. I have to say, what a thrill it was to come up there and play with the Solicitor and Soul Grinder. Oh, my God. I've not been able to quit jamming those guys ever since. Oh, absolutely. I love both of those bands. I mean, awesome people. And uh, (laughs) for the people who are asking, because there are a few of you, Solicitor will be having an episode here soon. We're going to wait for for them to get off tour, and we're going to have... Amy on the show, so hell yeah! Oh, she's awesome. I got I got a video of her. We was talking about uh, just inspirations and you know uh, old school metal to listen to. And she's turned me on to all sorts of stuff. I've turned her on to a few different uh, classic good album finds. Everybody needs to listen to more budget and yes. listen to the sounds they get out of three people. Oh, all for right, sure, right? yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get that you know, sort of feeling, and intensity, and you know, that was a that was a big influence for James. In Metallica oh, yeah. was Budgie, so hell yeah. I mean, to me, he's right there with Tony Iommi. I mean, Tony Board from uh, you know nobody's at the same level as Tony, but like he has the same kind of feel occasionally of just like getting in there, you know. I don't know, being uh, being the vibe that is heavy metal. Definitely, I agree with that. 
So, final question of the day. And with everything that's been going on, I am so glad that I drew this out of the pile because it fits so well. <laughs> I was actually when I when I just drew it and looked at it, I was like, "Holy shit. It's like fate or something." If you <laughs> if you Mike Brewer could bankrupt one person or company, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> that is so well, good. Oh, Baker, one person. Uh, who would it be? One person or company? Probably. Well, you know, Mark, I just have to put them all in a room and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, be a, I'd be all right. There's so many that have such a negative influence. I'm trying to, I'd have to do a little research to see exactly who needed to need bankrupt at the worst. Definitely. Is uh, whoever whoever's trying to divide us up the most and make the most profit off of us and paying their workers the least, they need it. For sure, they're the ones that need to get brought low. Yeah, they need to go I back to nothing. Because I wield a weapon that's timeless. You know, uh, kings and emperors—they've all laid waste to the voice of man. So, you know, if uh, just find me the right one, by God, I'll take them down. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I said we just start at the top. And just start taking off toes and see exactly how long it takes to get our billions back. Right. I mean, it's, is, that, is that too wrong? Well, um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, 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 and I love how you circled back to, to Anvil here. So it's so great. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's all a conversation is just music lyrics. Right. <laughs> I'm <laughs> for sure. I love Anvil. I'm so glad you got to play with this. Dude, I am too. Super rad people. Like, you know, Lips was on the show a while back, uh, back in uh, March of 2021. He was a super rad, super rad guy to talk to and to finally get to meet him and, and Rob and Chris in person. So awesome. <laughs> I mean, we Rob and Chris and I s- stood outside Z Bar and it was like 95 degrees at night. And we oh, were just, and we were just sitting there bullshitting, talking talking U.S. politics of all things, because uh, Rob and Chris and and for definitely those two definitely have their their finger on the pulse for a lot of stuff. So, and uh, you know, I, I love the I got I got all oh, three or four of the out albums, <laughs> but they were just so revolutionary. And you know, there's the same vibration that crosses genres, that crosses time. And it's that excited vibration. You know, they call it thrash metal, it rock and roll, they call it, you know, jazz, whatever it is. But it's that vibration at everybody's core that when you hear it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I like that shit. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and they got that stuff, you know. And they, there's like certain bands that are little stepping stones in the, in the evolution of rock and roll and heavy metal. And those guys definitely have their unique, you know, niche as being right there at the very beginning of thrash. That, you know, carrying the torch from the arena rock and the Led Zeppelins from the new wave of British heavy metal, you know. Oh, for and sure. April Wine is known with them bands. Canadian. I love Canadian bands, dude. They're so good. Rush, uh, Moxie, oh. so many good ones from north of the border. Oh, for sure. Mike, thank you uh, so much for coming on to the Metal Force this week. Mark, thanks for having me, buddy. I look, look forward to seeing you again and hearing from you. And uh, check out the Metal Forge, which is now being featured on YouTube. Is that right? Yeah, I've I've actually went back to posting on YouTube uh, as of last week, and you know just just gotta keep it going. Just gotta. I wanna, I wanna find get more. Back and look at that lips program for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, on the way out today, what what are we gonna play from Kiarn? Boot liquor, which you can imagine what that's about. <laughs> uh, and maybe you need to spell course. it out for me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? And honestly, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and say this. You know, that would be a perfect way to, with the way things have been for the last month, for sure. That would be a perfect song to end with today. All right, metalheads, you heard him. This is from Kiarn. This is Bootlicker. <laughs>
Hey, thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of the Metal Forge. I want to take a minute to remind you guys about the Patreon page. Over on the Patreon page, we have the tiers set up to support the production of the show. We feature the Down and Dirty, which is just a buck. There's nothing special for that one. It just sends me a thank you because every dollar helps. Then there's the Double Down and Dirty. Much akin to the Down and Dirty tier, everything helps produce the show in the end. You make your presence known, and I appreciate that more than you realize. Thank you for being a dedicated friend and supporter to the Metal Forge. By selecting that tier, you will receive some cool Metal Forge stickers in your mailbox. Now... We're really going to start pounding the metal madness with the Apprentice Metalhead for just $5 a month. By becoming an Apprentice Metalhead, you'll be given early access to the shows, published 24 hours before everyone else gets it. You're also going to receive three entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You're also going to receive a 10% discount on all Metal Forge merch, and you're going to receive a sweet Metal Forge patch for your battle jacket or backpack. And now, here is the big one. This is the Master Metalhead for just $10 a month. By becoming a Master Metalhead, you will receive a hand-numbered Metal Forge Master Metalhead membership card. You're going to be given early access to the shows as well, with 36 hours before everyone else. You're going to receive five entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You'll be able to submit audio questions that I will use on the show of you asking questions to the upcoming guests. Remember, timing is everything, and you will need to keep up with the upcoming guest list on the website. You're also going to receive advanced knowledge of any new merch coming out and be given a 25% discount on all Metal Forge merch. And you're also going to get all of the other rewards from the other tiers. So visit patreon.com slash Metal Forge Radio today and help support the Metal Forge. Rock on. <laughs>